Welcome back to The Breakfast. And of course, uh, from the report you just saw, uh, we are, of course, now going to be speaking with uh, Phoebe Dami Asolo, the marketing professional of fast moving consumer goods, uh, joining us live. Thank you so much for joining us, Phoebe. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Nigeria. Good, Good to morning. Be here. All right, Nigeria turned 60 a few days ago, and I understand you decided. You decided to gather professionals together to look at how we can, you know, contribute to national development. Could you speak to us a little more about that? Okay, um, like you rightfully said, uh, my name is Phoebe Damia Solo, and I'm a marketing professional in the FMCG industry. That's the fast moving consumer goods industry. I've been in this industry going on eight years now. And um, on a monthly basis, um, I and a few of my team members, we set up um, career professionals together to discuss how we can give back to our industry, how we can be the best in our organizations. Um, it's a small community of about um, 100 to 150 career professionals pan Nigeria. Um, in the month of October, we decided that instead of talking about um, how we can give back to, to our organizations and be the best employees, why don't we discuss how we can give back to the country and be the best citizens of the country? And then we got across to Mrs. Badejo, the, the Deputy Director for the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment, um, to, to basically just give us insights on, as to opportunities and different avenues that we as career professionals you know, can make Nigeria a better place. And this is because most times we're just in our offices, we're just at our desk, you know, we work so hard for our organizations. But we feel like we don't even know the opportunities that there are, you know, to give back to the country, to make the country better. Some, some people around us complain a lot. Nigeria is not good. Nigeria is this. Nigeria is that. But what are the opportunities that are there? You know, if we know about these opportunities, then maybe we can actually do give back to the society and become change agents. So that's why we did the events on the 3rd of October this, this past weekend. All right. The professionals uh, fall mostly around the middle class. Um, which, of course, almost says that they care more about themselves and their family members. How do you think that they can, at the same time, be of impact? Yes, um, honestly, we're really glad that we had Mrs. Badiger on the call. And she gave us, in fact, we're really grateful to her. She gave us so many insights as to how we can give back. Um, she mentioned first that um, being a good employee, because all our organizations, a, a number of us work across different multinationals. All our organizations already play a role into um, the nation's building, international development. So giving back to your organization is also um, directly proportionate to giving back to the country. That's one. Secondly, she mentioned obeying laws. So, for example, the government says at this time everyone should wear their mask. As career professionals, wear your mask. You know, these are the little things. Ensure that people in your offices, people in your community, people in your estate, people in your street, your parents, your siblings also wear their mask. When laws are actually passed across, ensure that you make sure that people around you adhere to these laws. Obeying laws, traffic lights, you're hanging out with your, friend, your friends, you're going to the beach. You know, little things like this ensure that they don't actually pass the traffic lights. So these are the little things that also help to contribute to, um, to, the, to the to national building as well, including littering the environment, little, thing like that, little things like that. We have to make sure that everyone around us actually obeys laws. We also, um, she also mentioned supporting the government. Um, a, 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 one thing that we, we, we have as youth is that we're, we're waiting for the government to support us. But she made us understand that we are already change agents. As far as we're citizens of the country, we are already change agents. So we can, we have the power to support the government, not just waiting for the government to support us. So any way that we can raise avenues, and funny enough, young people are digital, they're, they're digitally savvy. So we can set up websites, we can set up different things on social media to ensure that our community, people around us, you know, are able to get avenues in which we can contribute to make the country um, a better place for us. All right. Um, as uh, a stakeholder um, to the fast-moving consumer, uh, that's your group, basically, um, I want to ask how COVID-19 has impacted uh, your industry. Um, yes, yeah, so the fast-moving consumer goods industry is a large one, and one thing that stands out is the C, which is the consumer. 
the industry is, is basically wrapped around the consumer. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic um, made us to observe different behavioral changes um, for different consumers. So we noticed um, a change in the shopping habits of consumers. Um, a lot of people went online. E-commerce boomed in this, in this um, era. We had to be flexible. Um, different organizations and professionals had to be flexible in meeting consumers' needs at this time. Also, in terms of how they select products at this time, the, um, consumers moved from just any product to now health um, beneficial products, safety products. Those were the products that were really selling, the basic amenities, food, water. Those were the products that were really selling at this time. So we noticed that this, these new changes, the new needs of the consumers um, guided us as to how to meet these needs, how to um, procure solutions, marketing solutions, innovative solutions, product solutions to the consumer. Basically, the change in behavioral patterns to more healthy products and, and as well as the channels, e-commerce, neighborhood stores, you know, basically around them, nobody was really going to public places like the open markets. Nobody was, um, consumers decided not to go to wholesale, you know, all these places that would allow people to gather, a lot of people to gather. It was more smaller, smaller um, gatherings that, that consumers preferred, you know, to shop from. So this is what um, was able to guide us as to how we should procure solutions to them and meet their needs. All right, and also you're talking about um, stakeholders now. I, I want to, you know, ask about those in the hospitality business, those who run the cinema business. What is the survival strategy for those stakeholders? Yes, I have to say that they were the most hits <laughs> in this pandemic. Cinemas are shut down, hotels shut down. It was really crazy for them. Um, um, I, have, I have a degree, a master's degree in innovation, entrepreneurship and management from the Imperial College of London. And I have to say that innovation is what really helps a lot of them at this time. Um, flexibility is very important in management. And when we saw, when these people saw um, the change in consumer behavioral patterns, they had to be innovative. How do you become innovative when you have understood the change in consumers' behavioral patterns? One, digital. Now cinemas, if you go to different cinemas, if, even hotels as well, different places, you realize that um, you probably need to book online, you probably need to um, reserve your tables, you know, reserve your seats online. Um, instead of coming into the check-in um, check, check areas um, yourselves, you would need to book online. So basically anything, even menus now, if you go to most restaurants, they have decided to take off paper menus because of the interactions that people will have with their hands and the papers. So these things that um, also to ensure that people are safe. Now, if you go to different restaurants, you see that people, um, you, can, you can get on the website to order whatever you want. Even cinemas as well, you can book your movies online as well. So people are now leveraging, these industry um, um, sectors are leveraging heavy on digital. Also, safety precautions. Um, it's really important to ensure that your consumers understand how safe it is um, if they want to patronize you. So communicating that, oh, we are open now, but we are safe. You know, a lot of um, cinemas, a lot of restaurants, a lot of hotels, the whole hospitality um, industry is also using this technique. You know, you can come in, we're still um, safe as we were even before COVID-19 period. So these are the two major things that um, these business sectors are using right now, digital and ensuring the safety of their consumers. Uh, Phoebe, um, off what you're saying, what I heard most was safety measures, you know, applying um, new tech in trying to get more visibility. How does this translate to the financial aspect of this? Because um, you innovate all you want. If it doesn't trans uh, transfer to, uh, you know, money in your pocket after your expenses, then it is futile. So now um, for business um, owners at this time, you need to look at your business and determine what is important. Um, I think it was the CEO of Alibaba that said this year, business owners shouldn't think about profitability, you know, think about surviving through this pandemic and through the year. It's really important to obviously you're not we're not going to you're not going to lose out on your finances, but look at what can go out to ensure that the, the safety of my employees and the safety of my consumers, my customers are paramount at this time. You know, so 
whatever whatever it is that can go out, whatever variable expense that you have that can go out to ensure that that safety, you know, is ens is, 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 is ensured um, within your profitability, then I think it's it's a good, it's, it's definitely a good decision that business um, owners can make at this time. A lot of business business owners at this time are also dialing down on their headcounts. Um, they're looking at ways that they can reduce their um, employee, employee numbers at this time. They're looking at ways that they can take out different variable costs, whatever is not necessary um, for the business, the things that we may have, not must have. You know, they're thinking of taking those things out to ensure that the little number of employees that they have will still perform at optimal level and still be safe, still provide the same service for the consumers as well. So these are the major things that they need to look out in their profitability statements. All right. I also want to go back to uh, talking about impacts now. Um, the young people across the country, there's a lot of them that are disillusioned with the whole Nigerian uh, project and their, their hopes, you know, here in Nigeria. Is there ways that you can rekindle that hope, you know, and, you know, maybe encourage, you know, these millions and millions of young people across the country? Um, yes. Definitely. Um, I think one thing that we also said during the call is Nigeria will always be home for Nigerians. Wherever you go to in the world, you know that you're Nigerian. No one can take that away from you. You were born here. It's your home. So no matter how far you go, it's your home. And home, the home always has a place in our hearts. Um, like she also said to us as career professionals, um, we shouldn't target reaching millions of Nigerians in diaspora, even the ones here. We don't need to reach the millions of people. I, in my community, like I said, we have about 150 career professionals in the community. Imagine the 150 of us reach out to just two Nigerians. That's 300 already. And those 300, imagine they're change agents for their families. If we start to multiply and multiply, Within how many years, we might just be able to reach millions of people. It's about starting small. So we that are still passionate about the country, still hopeful for Nigeria, we're taking on the, the role of change agents and just starting small, starting with our families, with our communities, to ensure that hope is still retained. I would also use this as an opportunity to mention the media. Um, the role of the media in ensuring that hope is still maintained with young people is extremely important. Most times you go on the media and you hear negative things, the president has done this, the vice president, Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that. How about spreading more positive um, news about the country? You know, how about, because the more you hear positive things about the country, the more your hope is, is, is restored, you know, the more your hope is retained. So the media and of course we, the young change agents as we called ourselves on that day, I think these are the little things that we can use to ensure that people don't just lose hope, even the ones that have lost hope already, by the time you spread, you, you spread positivity to them, maybe, maybe they might just change their minds about the country and the state of the, state of the nation right now. All right, Phoebe, thank you very much for joining us and uh, sharing those very uplifting words on the breakfast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. All right. What do you make of that, really? Um, young people disillusioned, uh, you know, continued, keep hope alive, don't, yeah. don't lose hope, uh, nothing it, seems to change. Even when she was saying that, you know, I, I had to, you know, really roll my eyes in my head, you know, because it's, yes, it's, you know, great to speak positive about your country and um, keep hope alive, you know, but if your reality every day keeps, you know, smashing that hope so it to, to smithereens, it's, chew it's not... At, at you until yeah. there is nothing left exactly. to be optimistic and about. Some other thing, you know, that I... I uh, she mentioned, you know, and one thing that I was, you know, I hope that we can also get into a conversation about is um, new business strategies. COVID-19 came and changed a lot of things. People have now had to look out for new ways to keep their business alive. Um, do people, do we go back to the old way of doing things after the pandemic? Um, or do I, we I doubt that very much adapt? because um, one of the um, respondents in the reports we saw before she came in talked about there is nothing you can buy on Instagram right now. Exactly. Businesses are coming up trying to find ways, but you have to be careful though so you don't fall victim of scammers and people <laughs> who are out to uh, make money off you um, like that. But I doubt it will go back because the convenience of it, I don't need to go somewhere and struggle. All I need to do is stay in the comfort of my bed or my armchair you just sales. you know, make sales and do business I feel bad for everyone anyone who's not you know able to adapt in this period
by force, by fire, you have to move on with the time see if you want to be relevant in uh, today's uh, world. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.